He may not be a household name, but to Die Hard Blues fanatics, they are too familiar with him. This artist was a fantastic all-around blues man, soulful vocalist, great guitarist, brilliant writer, and skillful band leader. Due to his signature style that incorporates soul, blues, and R&B, this artist was frequently compared to the legendary B.B. King and Bobby Bland. His style helped him become one of the best-selling blues men of the 60s. Little Milton is the centerpiece of today's story. Now, before we start, please make sure you leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and push that notification bell to be sure you won't miss out on any more uploads. Now, without further ado, let's cue that intro. James Milton Campbell Jr. was born on September 7th, 1934 in Inveris, Mississippi, but grew up in Greenville, Mississippi. Big Milton, his father, was a farmer and local blues performer. By the age of 12, he had began learning how to play the guitar and had purchased his own by saving money from odd jobs that teenagers would perform. Milton legally discarded his first name James after realizing that his half-brother had the same first name. Milton began pursuing a music career by the age of 15 and he chose to adopt his father's name but with a twist and he began calling himself Lil Milton. Around this time he began performing and paying in local clubs and bars. T-Bone Walker had a big influence on him during this period. Milton started making impact on other local vocalists in the neighborhood, and as a result, he was given the opportunity to back up Sonny Boy Williamson. This led to him catching the attention of Ike Turner, who at the time was working as a musician and talent scout for Sam Phillips at Sun Records. Turner introduced Milton, who was still a teenager, to Phillips. Phillips was very impressed and signed on to Sun Records in 1953. In the beginning years at Sun, Turner's band backed up Milton for his first couple of singles. Milton's time at Sun, he tried a little bit of everything. Although he hadn't developed his signature style as of yet, these early recordings did have some boundless, youthful energy that made his early recordings some of his most exciting and rewarding. These singles was Begging My Baby, I wonder why my best friends want to take away from me. Somebody told me. My gal run around. I don't want her to be like that. If you love me. Well, and if you want me, baby, you all my poor heart. Alone in blue. Alone in blue. Well, she left looking for my baby. Yes, I rode the train all day. I'm going in homesick for my baby. <laughs> Unfortunately, none of these songs was a hit. Since these songs wasn't hits, and by 1955, his time at Sun Records ended. After this, Milton set about forming his own band. Milton and his group issued four songs for a minor label named Meteor Records between the years of 1956 and 1957. These songs was Love at First Sight. Let's Boogie Baby. Oh my little baby. I don't know what's the reason she never told me so. Milton and his band packed up and headed towards St. Louis in 1958 after they spell at Meteor Records. While in St. Louis, Milton met DJ Bob Lyons, who assisted him in recording a demo in order to earn him a deal with Mercury Records. When the label passed them up, Milton and Lyons decided to start their own label. Bobbin Records. A 
Eventually, the duo got a distribution deal with Chess Records. By owning his own label, Milton recorded 14 singles with That Would Never Do. She's a free and wise. She's got another place lately. She treats me like a child, but look, woman. I'm a lonely man. Baby, don't you hear Distance operator. Come to my girl tonight. Mm, I feel so. I found me a new love. Yes, I find strange dreams of only you. You don't even know. I'm trying to go and money to waste but i can't find another who could ever take your place but i'm hold me tight let me hold your hand come here pretty baby and let me say mo blues every night and every day i have the same dead love no more you don't even want to answer me woman when I knock up on your door My baby pleases me My baby suits me to a T She makes me happy as can be Let it be known Can you do I want you to know And I'm for you my Hey girl Hey baby Before I lose my mind Hey, hey girl Cross my heart Cause you're my own And I'm in love Lose my mind, I'm in love I really know that I'm in love I know it's real Milton was the head of the A&R department of Bobby Records And he brought in performers such as Albert King, Oliver Sane, and Frontella Bass Milton shifted to Chess sub label Checker Records in 1961 where his label was on the rise. At Checker, he developed his trademark soul inflicted BB King influence style. That same year, he got his first chart success with the single So Mean to Me. Oh, you said you never loved me. You admit you're doing me wrong. It wasn't until 1964 that he began seeing more chart success worldwide with the single Blind Man. By 1965, he released two charter singles with We're Gonna Make It. But we gonna make it. I know we will. And Who's Cheating Who? But it doesn't mean that's where I'm going. And cause my me Throughout the remainder of the 60s, Milton recorded singles like we got the winning hand. Every kill this won't feel as strong. Oh, baby. Man loves too. Yeah. I know, I know it sounds silly. Yeah. But I feel so bad. Feel like a ball game on. I never turn my back. Knowing more and more. Honey, darling, yeah, you know you're sweet to me. Each passing day brings us much closer together. Let me down easy. You got some money else on your mind. Bricks ain't grocery. Bricks ain't grocery. Eggs ain't poultry. And Mona Lisa was a man. Just a little bit. Give me a itty weeny bit. Just a teeny weeny bit of your love. Try your love. And if these walls could talk. That walls don't talk. I tell you they never talk. Along with these singles, he released three albums of the 60s with We're Gonna Make It in 1965. That peaked at 101 on the Billboard 200 charts and number three on the Billboard Top R&B Albums charts. 
Seen Big Blues, that was released in 1966. And Grits St. Groceries, that was released in 1969 and peaked at 159 on the Billboard 200 chart and number 41 on the Billboard Top R&B Albums chart. Also that same year in 1969, Leonard Chess death threw the label into disarray. That next year, Milton released two singles with Baby I Love You. Oh, baby. Yes, I Somebody changing my sweet baby's mind. Gave me up. Oh, tell me, baby. And what? In 1971, Milton departed Checkers after the death of Leon Chess, and he joined the Memphis-based soul label, Stax Records. Milton time at Stax, he began to change up his format by adding bigger horns and string selections, also spotlighting his soulful vocals more than traditional blues. He had multiple charted singles via stacks, including If It Ain't A Reason, Take out your belt and paper, take the message down. You're running around on the corner, and you're cheating too. Yes, you are. That's what love will make you do. What love will do for you. That's what love will make you do. Tan Pan Alley. Cause every woman I get. closed doors by hanging all over me in a crowd oh no she let me back in we had a little misunderstanding i packed my bags and left and said i wouldn't be back no more yes i did and if you talk in your sleep oh you but if he should ever wake up between the years of 1973 and 1974, Milton released two albums with stacks, starting with Waiting for Little Milton, which peaked at the number 39 on the Billboard Top R&B Albums charts, and Blues and Soul, which peaked at number 45 on the Billboard Top R&B Albums charts. Milton signed with Glaze Records, but Stax Records went bankrupt in 1975. At the time, this label was better known for its funk, in Disco's acts. While here, his recordings was full-blown crossover affairs, and these singles saw some success with Friend of Mine, Good Buddy, Good buddy. Advisor on Love and Whatnot. Now you always, Baby, It Ain't No Way, Me, Oh no, baby, it ain't no way for me to love you the way I want. Just one step. You love me Loving you. Baby, it's like being on top. Oh, yeah. Though I don't even have a sin. He also released albums such as Friend of Mine, which peaked at number 50 on the Billboard Top RB album charts, and Be For You, You For Me. From there, he went on and bounced with various labels such as Golden Ear Records, Evidence Records, MCA Records, Camille Records. Tell Arc Records and his longest stay was at Malico Records. Beltman found a home at Malico Records since it was home to quite a few Southern Soul singers and blues artists. Throughout the remainder of his career, Melton released charted albums such as Age Ain't Nothing But a Number that peaked at number 53 on the Billboard Top Army Albums Chart, Playing for Keeps that peaked at number 55 on the Billboard Top Army Albums Chart. Back to back, that peaked at number 73 on the Billboard Top RB Albums Charts. Too Much Pain, that peaked at number 40 on the Billboard Top RB Albums Charts. Reality, that peaked at number 57 on the Billboard Top RB Albums Charts. Struggling Lady, that peaked at number 63 on the Billboard Top RB Albums Charts. Cheating Habit, that peaked at number 14 on the Billboard Top Blues Albums Charts. For Real, that peaked at number 13 on the Billboard Top Blues Albums Charts. Welcome to Lil Milton, that peaked at number 10 on the Billboard Top Blues Albums Charts. Guitar Man, that peaked at number 8 on the Billboard Top Blues Albums Charts. And Think of Me, 
and peaked at number 14 on the Billboard Top Blues Albums charts. Bill Milton was inducted to the Blues Hall of Fame in 1988, and that same year he received the W.C. Handy Award for Blues Entertainer of the Year. Milton passed away after suffering two strokes in one month and was hospitalized until his death on August 4, 2005, where he was survived by his wife, Patricia. Despite the fact that Lil Milton never achieved the crossover success that B.B. King and Bobby Bland did, he did have his own lane, and that's being the big concert attraction for his whole career. Lil Milton always carried himself and his music with respect. He was deeply committed to preserving the wonderful legacy he believed the blues represented. The same unbended current of pride, resiliency, and the will to express the truth that flowed through his music was an inaugural component of the man himself. 2005 was a year when soul and blues lovers was robbed of one of the most proud and humble blues performers of all time.